Good day to you. Mark Settle, Hurricane Track here. It's Monday now, the 3rd of March, 2025. Great to be with you again as I take a look at this week's weather. And let me tell you something, starting today, it is going to be very busy. A volatile pattern. I saw somebody say it's bowling ball season, meaning that these big upper level pieces of energy are going to swing across the country from west to east. And the battle of the seasons has commenced. We're going to have severe weather. We've got a blizzard warning out there in some areas of the country. Lake effect snows still piling up. I mean, have you seen some of the video coming out of New York? Holy cow. And then maybe at the end of the week, remember this is this week's weather, so we're going to look out 168 hours. There might be a March big time nor'easter. We'll have to see about that. Uh, and then at the end of today's update, we will certainly take a look at a couple of things related to the upcoming hurricane season now roughly 90 days away. So we're going to have to start watching that a little bit more closely. One of the things that we monitor, of course, is the state of the ENSO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation, related to sea surface temperatures, and we'll take a gander at that before I sign off. So let's get started, shall we? First of all, check out the National Weather Service homepage here. Lots of colors today, and let's just point out what's happening. Lake effect snows here, downwind of Erie and Ontario. Uh, looking down south along the northern Gulf Coast, those strong southerly winds that are coming up and that are going to feel this big storm system coming across. You got some coastal flood advisories for parts of Louisiana and the Texas coast. And then your pinks in here, the red flag warnings, which by the way, we had a lot of that over the Carolinas this weekend. Very dry conditions, very windy. We've had quite a few fires, including one pretty close to where I am here in the Wilmington area. It was down there in Horry County, and uh, just a very uh, volatile pattern, that word very appropriate because of a lot happening with the weather as of late, including fire weather. So when you see these pinks in here, that's not good. Very, very critical fire weather situation whenever you see that. And then there's your blizzard warnings in parts of Nebraska and Colorado and one little county there of northwest Kansas. A very potent storm system going to be taking shape through here and then in the warm sector, we're going to have the threat of some severe weather. I will show you that on the Storm Prediction Center site in just a moment. And then farther to the west, miscellaneous areas, random areas of winter weather, but nothing organized coming in. Well, not yet, but just wait a couple of days because this parade of storms, like I said, the bowling ball season is upon us, and we're going to get lots of activity coming in to the west coast. You can see the next piece of energy coming in out here, you strong subtropical energy coming across from the south. You mix that up with the Arctic air that's still trying to come down out of Canada. And then the Bermuda High sitting out here pumping in warm Caribbean and Gulf moisture. Oh yeah, it sets up quite the stage for a lot of active weather as we go forward. And we can see that today, this is kind of a quick turnaround and uh, turn of events, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Storm Prediction Center putting an enhanced up for today. That wasn't there a couple days ago. A lot of talk on social media about what could happen. And now we're into the enhanced today. And this is important because this is going to affect people out here uh, that might not be. Uh, they're thinking, well, it's just March. Where, why is severe weather popping up so soon? Well, it is, and we have to be ready for it. That's the bottom line. So uh, I like how they put the cities in here, anywhere from Oklahoma City to Dallas to Topeka could have thunderstorm activity that would be impactful. The tornado threat, there's going to be quite a few tornado chasers out here, storm chasers, whatever you want to, whatever moniker you want to assign them. I just hope they're careful out there. There's more and more of them each year, but they're going to be concentrated here in this yellow area because that is the highest probability, 1 out of 10, right, or 10 out of 100, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, that is pretty substantial, and even in the green area, can't rule out the uh, threat of tornadoes. And again, I want to encourage you, part of the thing that I'm going to be really doing, especially as we get into hurricane season this year, is encouraging people to find information that I point out and then read further. You know, further inform yourself by reading the discussions, reading the information that helps you to better prepare. Because I want to steer people away from numbers and worrying about categories and threats and one out of five, five out of five, whatever. Those are important, but those are at the surface. Deep down, and I say this often, 
the weather is one area where you can definitely be selfish and say, how is this going to affect me? And the answer to that question is very often written in a lot of these products from the SPC, from your local WFO, the weather forecast office in your area, or once we get into hurricane season, the National Hurricane Center. So I encourage you, if you live out here or you just have an interest in severe weather, take a gander at this. It's very informative as to the reasoning why we have this enhanced risk out here today. So the tornado threat certainly is substantial, especially for early March. So the wind, your downburst winds and straight line winds, certainly also a problem as well. And then some hail. It's too bad I can't be out there because I like studying hail. That is something I have recently started doing as of last year, officially. And year two of that will commence here in a few weeks. But uh, it's hard to just drive out there on a 12-hour notice, right? Uh, so I'll have to watch from afar. But yes, these are the hazards for today. And then tomorrow, we shift to the deep south here, the Mississippi Valley, where the tornado threat is substantial. Could get a couple of really violent, long-lived tornadoes. We're going to have to watch this closely. And let me pop on again real quick. And to that end, we will be live tomorrow afternoon. Just going to try some things. Uh, CJ and myself providing some coverage, some live coverage starting tomorrow afternoon. I don't know exactly what time. We'll figure all of that out. And it'll sort of help people to see things from our perspective. We'll look at radar and social media posts and things like that because this does look like it's going to be a substantial severe weather threat tomorrow. we got today, but tomorrow looks even worse. The wind threat, obviously substantial, and a pretty widespread hail as well, especially with any supercells that can really get going. Anything discrete, and that's the key word here, anything that's out there by itself. Real quick lesson, you get these linear areas of storms along the front, and uh, they can even be separated a little bit, but then out ahead of them, you get those ones that has a little bit of a hook on it. You know, you see those with like little kidney beans, and they curl up, and they move southwest to northeast generally, out ahead of the, the main line, and this becomes completely filled in, or what we call linear mode. The supercells move off by themselves, they become discrete, and you can get a nasty tornado out of that. That's what we got to be watching for, especially tomorrow. Finally, by day three, it's going to be in my neck of the woods, the severe weather certainly much more limited at this point I mean the Atlantic Ocean out here is still pretty cold so there's just not a lot in the way of uh, instability at the surface but the dynamics aloft are going to be enough to give us the threat of some severe weather uh, in the eastern part of the country into the mid-Atlantic so we need to be watching for that so let's take a look at what it looks like via the GFS this is the 12 Z run from today 12 Zulu time as we call it, initialized 8 a.m. Eastern. That's the way I like to phrase it up anyway. And uh, the initial map, you can kind of see the outline of everything here just by looking at the what we call the thickness values. So ridge and trough, right? There's your trough over here. Some ridging out in the nation's midsection and a surface load trying to develop right there in Colorado. And that is going to set the stage. That very warm, moist air coming in off the Gulf, streaming in to Tornado Alley, that's going to be a part of the overall process to get some storms going later today. And we can see, just looking at the basic operational model here and the precip depiction, it definitely looks like an active time overnight tonight. Uh, that's the other problem. Some of these are going to be in the nighttime hours, so boy, I really hope people are careful. But back on the northwest side of this, look at that. Strong winds. Look at those isobars packed in there. Lines of equal pressure, as we call it and that pressure gradient it's not you know like the biggest we've ever seen by far but 1024 up here over Canada 987 over west central Kansas and the difference between these two that is your gradient right through there and with that snow that is why you can see the blizzard conditions especially once you get into tonight and early tomorrow wow it's going to be howling out there and I'm going to be out here in Nebraska in May and June maybe even July we'll see that gets more to the true high plains, but hail and supercells will be dominant once we get to summer, spring and summer, but now it's blizzard conditions. Isn't that something? Anyway, this storm system marches east and uh, brings more snow to the lakes region. Yay, right? Then our next storm system starts to work its way into the west, 
We are out at hour 84. Look at all that that's happening in just the next three days. Finally, by days four, five, six, and seven, the next storm system comes across. And look at this. This is day six. Hmm, right? Enough cold air possibly in place over here in the east, the mid-Atlantic states and the northeast to New England. Wow, we haven't seen that in quite some time. The signal, uh, got to be careful because we've been, we've been had several times this year, snookered as it were. That would be quite the storm system. We'll see if it manifests itself on future model runs, the ensembles, other models like the Euro. You know the drill, but this gets us out to one week. And sure enough, as this storm, if it's there, exits, there will be a storm over here. It's just a matter of, is it going to be that one? And, and to that extent, we'll have to see about that. But then we got the next one coming in. You know what? The good thing about these coming into the west like this, we're adding to the snowpack, adding to the watershed out there, which is a great thing to see. All right. So looking ahead, again, hurricane season starts June 1st, officially, on one of these. Man-made calendar. Got my handy-dandy calendar there. A little prop for you. Uh, you never know, though. Sometimes we've had years where we get activity in May, January, whatever. But uh, you know, really, once we get to mid-May, we really start to look for signs of uh, trouble in the tropics, whether it's the Central American gyre that sets up and sort of acts as a little factory to try to crank these things out. And then once we get into June, we are in the beginning of hurricane season officially. And one of the things we look at, of course, are sea surface temperatures. That's the eh, primarily the most important driver. Without the warm oceans, we wouldn't have a need for tropical cyclones. And we look at things like the anomalies, the departures from the long-term average. And some interesting things have been happening. Look, we got this El Nino-ish look to the equatorial temperatures off of South America. And it gets out to about 140 longitude. Then back to the cooler, somewhat colder, whatever, La Nina look. Uh, and you might look at that and say, wow, look at that. we got an El Nino coming on. Maybe we won't have a busy hurricane season. To which I say, wait until I show you the next tab up there. Some interesting changes coming up. But this is certainly a change from what we have seen in the last couple of months. Uh, and then out here in the Atlantic, this is interesting too. Finally cooled off there in the deep tropical Atlantic, Atlantic from where we have seen uh, for the last couple of years where it has just been ridiculously warm relative to average. That being said, still a pretty warm Atlantic overall. Caribbean and Gulf still quite a bit above the long-term average. Now here's what I'm interested in. This is int uh, very you know, fascinating. This explains all of that warmth that we have seen over in the eastern Pacific. These are your westerly winds as of late, and that has helped. Let me go back to that graphic. Let's take the telestration off. That'll help too. Uh, the westerly winds have helped all this area right here anomalously warm, and we can see that on this Hofmuller diagram. This is the past right through here. This is where we are right now, the forecast, and this is where we go forward, right, through time. So this is all that warming that we saw for those westerly winds, and um, uh, some uh, easterly winds have been, eh, the Atlantic's not been that busy in terms of strong trades, but this explains the warmth for sure. Now what's coming though, this is interesting. Right on cue here, look at all of these deep blues and purples. Those are strong easterly winds, which should help to re-energize that La Nina. And I bet by the time we get to the other end of the month of March, that when I show you this graphic again, this will be but a memory and we'll start to stretch that blue back out to what extent we'll have to wait and see there's plenty of subsurface cold all throughout here this is the surface remember that this we're looking at the surface down below there's still plenty of cold water lurking so any resumption of strong easterly winds those are winds that come from the east uh, across the equatorial region will help to upwell some of that colder water and I think we'll erode those warm anomalies away as we get towards the end of the month, presuming that these Havmolers, that this forecast is correct. Again, this is one model. This comes from the GFS, I do believe. Yep, the operational. This is, uh, by the way, from Dr. Michael Ventress' website. I just want to make credit, give credit where credit is due. Also, notice as we get out into time, some uh, westerly winds in the Atlantic here, all the way out to Africa. 
that could warm that area that I showed you that cooled off. So this is all going to be leading up towards the end of March. And, you know, the seasonal forecasts are going to come out in the first part of April. Those folks that do those things, Colorado State, NC State, University of Arizona, uh, some of the bigger weather companies that are out there that make projections, they look at this kind of stuff and what could be happening going forward when they make their seasonal predictions to give us an idea of the overall background state of the hurricane season ahead. Remember, nobody can tell you where anything will end up on any particular date. We're trying as a science, but that is really, really hard to do. So that's why we look at the bigger picture like this to at least give us something to work with. All right. So a quick reminder, you're watching this more than likely on YouTube. Some people watch it over on our Patreon because I do post uh, the videos right on Patreon. They have done a good job over the years of making their tools a lot more robust and I've enjoyed that a lot as have our members. But YouTube is really the main focus of what we do on social media between that and the Twitter. Uh, that's where I do most of my posting. So don't forget, I think the most important thing, yes, all the YouTubers and gamers out there, they say smash that like button, whatever. I think making sure that you have the notifications on if you're a subscriber, and here's why. I noticed this, uh, let's use this blue color here. So I'm subscribed to this uh, really fascinating live channel where these deer feed and a little trough deal up in Maine. It's called Brown Brownville's Food Trough Deer or something, another deer pantry or whatever. And it's just like a screensaver that I have on downstairs in the big TV when I'm not watching regular TV or whatever. And I noticed this, that when they're live, which is 24-7, you get that little notification there. Let me take my blue away. See that? So if you're subscribed and the notifications are on, you should see that. And I think that's important because we we'll be doing a lot of live work during this year's severe weather season, especially once we get to May, June, and July, and we start our hail project again for this year, which I want to talk about more later. But anyway, we do have a robust YouTube channel, been on there since 2006. Would love to have you as a subscriber. If you're watching and you haven't subscribed, you know what to do. But I think, again, more importantly than that, put those notifications on so that when we go live, when I post a new video, you are made aware of it and you can have timely information that's what it's all about right all right well that is it for me for today uh a, a very active week ahead that is for sure remember sometime tomorrow afternoon and to the uh, point that i just made about making sure the notifications are on once we go live uh you want to be notified about that cj and i will be in here late tomorrow afternoon into the evening covering the severe weather in the deep south and we'll do it from a radar perspective National Weather Service posts and social media and whatnot. It will just be, you know, another tool for you to take advantage of if you want to watch and tune in and see what's happening with tomorrow's severe weather. We'll be doing that later tomorrow. Have a great rest of your Monday. As always, thanks for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. It's good to have you. I am Mark Suddeth, and we'll see you again tomorrow afternoon.